All right, so I have a simple example here. I just have a heading element here, and this is what looks like looks like right now. Now let's say that after this text here, we want to get like a vertical line. So when you deal with these types of little lines after an element or below or you know very close to the element, it's best to solve this with a so-called pseudo element. So what you can do, we have the normal heading, right? And we can also use before and after on this. We'll use after here. We're sort of creating a child element on this heading element from the CSS. So you always have to include the content property because the idea here is, for example, that you can insert text, right? So we can sort of create an element. We can insert text from the CSS. This is not what we want to do, but we still need to keep it here. Uh, we're just going to style this like a bar, right? And that bar or line could be, let's say, three pixels uh, thick. The height could be maybe something like 25 pixels. The background color could be a blue violet. Now, this, these are actually inline level elements by default. You cannot just set the height and width of inline level elements. Um, so best to use display block. And then let's see what we get. Okay, so now we get this line. It's positioned here. So we want it to be positioned here on the right side. So we can actually use position absolute. And um, with position absolute, you can use these offsets, right? So we could say it should sit zero pixels from the right, but the right of what exactly? So you need to, have, you need to set the position relative on some element to make that the reference point, right? So zero pixels from the right of this element because this has the position relative now. And when you do that, it's gonna sit all the way here actually because this H1 is actually a block level element. So it's actually taking up the entire width here. That's what block level elements do. And we're saying it should sit zero pixels from the right. So it's actually gonna sit all the way here. So let's actually make this an inline level element. So it doesn't take up the entire width, just the, the size of its uh, content. And then um, let's say it should sit 50% from the top. And that's a little bit too much. And so the trick here is always to use transform and then pull it back a little bit by 50% of its own size. So you can do that with uh, transform translate, right? So then it's going to be perfectly centered in terms of its own um, height, right? So you can see the blue box is, is, is its size. And now you can see the bar, if I zoom in a little bit, is perfectly centered in there. Right? Now it's sitting right against the edge or, um, or against the letter here. So maybe it should sit... Um, maybe negative number here to push itself a little bit more to the right, right? And maybe it's actually sitting um, a little bit too high because it looks like it may be a bit strange with the P, right? So maybe we shouldn't even be using these complicated solutions. Maybe we can just play around with the pixels and get our, well, favorite position like this, right? Now, typically you also see these as a heading as part of the, of the left side. So maybe it should actually just be on the left side and maybe it should just sit like negative three pixels Right, maybe a little bit more and maybe a little bit less from the top. All right, so you can see where I'm going with this, right? So you can play around with this. Maybe the height should be a bit more, right? So this, you could see these types of, you know, bars that, with these headings. These are quite common. And, you know, in CSS, you would use a pseudo element for that. That would be the best solution. So it's really important that you have mastered CSS. It's going to benefit the rest of your career if you work with the front end. I have a whole course on that. Definitely check it out. The link is in the description. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.